Hi there everyone! Welcome back to English with Catherine. I hope you've had a good week and you're ready for the weekend. If you're new here, hello, hi, welcome. And if you're already a subscriber, thanks again for watching another video. So, spring is in full swing here at the moment in the UK and I wanted to share with you some book, film and TV recommendations. A lot of people ask me what should they be watching, reading, looking at on a daily basis to help their English and I just thought instead of doing lots of general recommendations let's do it by the season. So all of these film and TV series and books are all set in England or the UK so you can completely romanticise the season of spring while being transported to Britain. You will be killing two birds with one stone because while you're learning about British culture you'll also be learning English and improving your English. And this is my favourite way to teach English is to combine learning the language with the culture. It just makes it more interesting and more relevant and more exciting. Truly though, I really want to share with you the magic of British springtime. Let's get started, I'm so excited to show you them. So before we get started, I have got something I want to tell you about. The wonderful Lingoda are very kindly sponsoring this video. So if you've never heard of Lingoda, they are an online language school. You can learn English, German, French or Spanish with native level teachers in private classes or in group classes. You can even take business English classes which is pretty essential for using English in a professional environment and just upgrading your English in general. Today I want to tell you about their amazing sprint challenge. Now in English to sprint means to run quite fast so obviously this is all to do with learning fast. The Sprint Challenge is a two month learning challenge where you take lessons intensively. The regular Sprint is 15 classes taken in one month and the Super Sprint Challenge is 30 classes taken in a month. But the most important thing to tell you is that if you actually complete the challenge and follow all the rules you can get your money back. You can get 50% of your money back for the regular sprint and 100% of your money back for the super sprint. And I think it's worth telling you that 14,000 students have managed to complete this so it's absolutely possible. These days we want results quickly and this sprint challenge is a really efficient way to learn English and to see improvement as quick as possible and that added incentive of getting your money back just adds to the motivation. So the classes are online and they are possible 24-7 so Lingoda students can learn anywhere in the world at any time and we all know that flexibility is so important when we have such busy lives. The experienced teachers will give you personal feedback after every class and in the classes you will focus on real life conversations and tricky grammar structures all based around topics that interest you. And just to make all of this even more amazing, Lingoda have given me a discount code. The code is CATHERINE20 and that will get you 20 euros or 25 US dollars off your registration. Now all the details are in the description box below my video so just head on there and you'll see everything you need. I really think this is such a good idea and will motivate and inspire you to improve your English. Let me know how it goes and good luck. The first book is Bird Cottage by Eva Mayer. First thing that I want to tell you about is the lovely colour of the cover. It's so cheerful and very spring-like. As you can probably tell it does have a theme of birds but let me tell you more. So this book will give you all of the bright positive vibes of spring. Now I don't know if you know the word vibes. Vibes is a very modern word that's used a lot at the moment. You will see it all over social media in YouTube videos, in films and it just means good positive energy. Vibes. You can actually have bad vibes as well like you can say someone has bad vibes 
but in this context I'm using it positively. So this book gives off good vibes. So this is a semi-fictional story, so it's kind of based on true events. And the main character is called Gwendolyn. If that isn't one of the most beautiful names, I don't know what is. Gwendolyn Howard is her full name. Gwendolyn Howard is a woman based in London and she leaves her London life behind to move to a little cottage in the Sussex countryside, which is actually where I'm from. I'm actually from Sussex, so I can really relate to the descriptions of the surroundings because they're very familiar to me. <laughs> she leaves behind her London life and she devotes the rest of her life to her one true passion, which is birds. Now, even if you don't like birds or bird watching or anything to do with birds, I promise you, if you like countryside and positive energy, you will love this book. Because a lot of it is about the main character's relationship with the natural world, so everyone can relate to that, right? While you're enjoying the beautiful spring atmosphere from this book, you will also be learning some new vocabulary. And there are some gorgeous words in here. I recommend making a note of them as you're reading and you come across a really nice word, make a note of it and then you can review it later. Some really nice words that I made a note of when reading are precocious, conservatory, sluggishly, caress. So the language is traditional, but also you will see language that is used for everyday speaking, like idioms and phrasal verbs. So it's going to improve your overall vocabulary, your knowledge of some advanced words, but also help you to see phrasal verbs and idioms in context. There's also a lot about British culture, British habits. I ordered game pie with Cumberland sauce. Now, if you don't know what that means, read it and you will find out. I'm going to read you some parts to it just to try to persuade you to read it now. Some people have never held a bird those soft feathers, that vulnerability, so much life in something so small. And just listen to the next part, it's so beautiful. Poppies, cornflowers, buttercups, the water is clear and cool. I walk straight into the middle of the river, then sink into the water. For a moment I gasp for breath, and then swim, my hair waterweed, my hands water brown. I duck down and touch the bottom. I rise to the surface, float on my back. A noise makes me jump. I open my eyes, twist my body around. A duck! <laughs> I really recommend that one. It's very cute. Number two, The Last Garden in England by Julia Kelly. Critics have called this captivating, immersive and enchanting and I definitely agree. So this story follows three women at three different points in time and they're all connected by one garden. So it takes place in the present day, in 1907, and in 1944. And you really fall in love with the characters, and the writing about the garden is amazing. It's almost like the garden is, is a character in the book in itself. If you're a fan of historical fiction, you have got to give this one a try. But just look at this lovely cover. I am so drawn to the front cover. I know they say that you should never judge a book by its cover, <laughs> but we all do with books, right? So that's perfectly normal. Okay, just listen to this description. It's just lovely. They were nearly through the book when he turned a page and she gasped. A beautiful garden with curving brick walls, tall dogwoods, stretching up to the sky and lush foliage beneath. Lush is one of my favourite words. It just means alive and thriving. Right, let's move on to the films. Yay! So the first film that I want to recommend you is Finding Neverland. What a film. I can't believe I didn't know about this until a month ago. I was watching a YouTube video and they recommended this film and it just sounded like my absolute perfect film. Uh, in English we say, it sounded right up my street, which means definitely my kind of film. So the film is based on Sir J.M. Barry, 
who wrote Peter Pan, one of the most loveliest stories ever about a child that never grows up. I'm sure you know the story. And this film shows how he was inspired to write Peter Pan and he meets this lovely family who just show him that life doesn't have to be serious, it, it can be very playful and fun. The whole film is about youth and not growing up and staying young at heart and in the mind. And it is chock full of amazing actors, including Johnny Depp and Kate Winslet. It's set in Kensington Gardens in London, so you will see all these beautiful Regency-style houses, just the lovely tree-lined roads, the costume choices, oh, they are so perfect. There's lots of tea drinking and cricket playing in the park. And there's one of the best examples of child acting I think I have ever seen. <laughs> so this one is really good for your listening practice because not only will you hear the RP accent of Kate Winslet, you will also hear the Scottish accent of Johnny Depp. And can I just say, well done Johnny Depp, that is an amazing Scottish accent. I've been to Scotland many times, I know the accent, it's really strong at times, it's a beautiful accent. It's so important to be aware of all the other British accents. There are so many different regional accents, so this film is great for that. My second film recommendation is Emma. Have you seen Emma? What a lovely film. It came out in the year of the pandemic, so 2020. It's an adaptation of Jane Austen's fourth novel, Emma, and it's basically a comedy about love. It's really clever, really well acted. It's set in the early 19th century, obviously, and so you will hear some really archaic language. The attention to detail, the costumes, everything is almost perfect and symmetrical and a lot of it is set in springtime and summer, so it is just lovely to watch at this time of year. Go and watch the film. If you've got Netflix, perfect, just put it on right now. Okay, we're moving on to TV. Now, I don't have a TV. I know, you're gonna be shocked. This next recommendation is on Netflix, and it is The Great British Bake Off. Wow, that is a tongue twister. <laughs> this is the best cooking competition you have, well, baking competition, you have ever seen, I promise you. It's set in a tent in the English countryside. All the colours are pastel and very cheerful and it's just so positive and happy. And honestly, I have cried happy tears and sad tears while watching this programme because they, they try so hard in what they're doing and, it, and it's so stressful at parts because you just think, oh my god, that's gonna fail, or wow, that's so good, I hope it turns out well in the end. It's just, it really just like pulls you in to each contestant and it's just amazing. If you just wanted to put something on to cheer yourself up and see some happy faces and some lovely colours and laughing and joking, this is the programme for you. <laughs> now, in terms of your English learning, this is perfect. You will hear so many different accents coming from the contestants in the show and they are from all over the UK. So maybe you could sort of challenge yourself to try and work out where each person is from and then you'll find out when they tell you. Um, but yeah, it's a great way to learn about the different regional accents in the UK. And also you might learn a few British recipes as well. They bake some absolute classics like apple crumble, um, Victoria sponge cake. So yeah, enjoy that and thank me later. <laughs> Number two of my TV recommendations is Bridgerton. <laughs> You've probably seen it. Maybe you haven't, but if you haven't seen it, oh, it is so lovely. I actually watched this in the pandemic and it really helped me stay positive and happy and really cheered me up during that crazy time. The costumes and characters are just so fun. In fact, the word fun is the word I would use to describe the whole thing. It's so innocent, beautiful costumes, diamonds and crystals and pearls and 
Now, obviously, the language is going to be of that time, so it will be a sort of lesson in more archaic vocabulary. But again, that's lovely for you to hear. It's never a bad idea to watch these period drama style films or TV series. They're all good for your research into learning British English. So just to tell you, it's set in 1813. So the language you will hear is going to reflect that time. And also there's a new Bridgerton uh, related series that's just come out and I've only seen the first episode. It's called Queen Charlotte and my boyfriend actually worked on this so he knows it very well <laughs> and it is lovely. Again, very, very like Bridgerton. So after you watch Bridgerton, try Queen Charlotte. So this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I've made quite a few recommendations. Let me know in the comments what your favourite book was or if you actually end up watching any of those films or TV series, let me know what you think. I'm going to have a think about the summer recommendations and then the autumn and the winter and so on. <laughs> but yeah, reading and watching things in English is obviously going to help your English. The more English that you can get into your ears and your eyes, the better. <laughs> Hit subscribe if you want to, that would be lovely, thank you. And you can follow me on Instagram, I do post about British English tips and culture and my life and what I get up to. And you can also um, download a free ebook via my Instagram page as well. And yeah, I hope you have a lovely weekend and I'll see you next Friday. Bye!